Hey guys, so this is a park that's near my house and I have used this particular location for quite a few different pieces of spell work and smaller ritual. It is a larger public area. So people come through here quite a bit. So you can do things like you could probably squeeze in an LBRP and some minor things like that without attracting too much notice. Or if it's the type of ritual work that is not um, very... Like you could carry around a lit candle or certain things like that without attracting too much notice. It would just be up to you as to what you felt comfortable with um, and what the parameters might be of that spell work. Um, so I wanted to talk in this particular video about time and place for your rituals. And So, of course, you can see behind me this waterfall, which is a really glorious spot, actually. And this is very close to where I live right now and where I have lived previously. Um, I'm not trying to be, like, too obvious about those things, but you could probably figure it out if you had enough time on your hands. I mean, if you want to dox me, that's your choice. I can't stop you. I feel like that's a lot of effort to put into something like that. Anyway, whatever. Can you tell that I'm still kind of paranoid? <laughs> anyway, so when you're choosing your location, you do want to think about things like how often it's being traveled. Uh, I don't know if you can see. There's like a house up there, there's a house up there, there's a house up there, there's houses up here on this hill, and on their gazebo, they have clearly posted like private property, so they don't want people going up there, which is fine, um, but this is a public park. Uh, as you could see on the B-roll walking in, um, there's little posts. So trail markers, uh, this park is not large enough to get lost in, and all of the trails are really well marked. Um, it's a very squishy time right now because it's been raining a lot, but that has its advantages too, um, especially if you're working with water elementals or if you are trying to obfuscate the presence of fire elementals for any reason. So it's something to consider. Um, I also have my planetary planner and of course anytime you're doing spell work you're going to want to have your um, planetary alignments worked out. You're going to want to know what time of day. So on my cell phone, up here at the top, you can see um, I have a planetary hours app on my phone. It's the hour of Venus right now. Um, and you can plan all of that stuff out ahead of time. Know when you want to come over here, know what time of day, what is going to be going on in the sky. Um, I also have my... 
The reinforcements are coming. I have my, this is my deck of cards that I'm using right now while I'm traveling. Um, all my other decks are in storage right now. All my stuff is in storage and I only have like a few things. So um, I have, these are my playing cards. Um, and I also have, this is a watch case. Um, I pulled the watch part out. And now I have a bunch of dice inside, so I can use that for geomancy if I want to. Um, and as a pendulum. So it's a multi-purpose tool. Uh, so this area is a little bit difficult to get to, but not impossible. Just that the terrain over here, as you can see, it's a little bit steep, um, but it does make it slightly more secluded. Um, there is somebody coming right now, like with a dog, so people walk all over this park. You just have to be ready for that. So you can see I was sitting right over there. And we crossed over to here. So there's a lot of mobility in this particular waterfall area too that I like. So different elemental energies that you could decide to work with. Of course, water. Earth. There is a bit of a breeze here. Um, so you could feasibly be dealing with air energies as well. There's some daffodils over there. Uh, and of course, if you were to use fire, you would want to do so uh, very carefully. Of course, right now it's very wet. Um, this particular climate is very humid and very wet a lot of the time, so um, you're not as likely to start a fire that you cannot stop, but that's no reason to be cavalier about it. There's a lot of little tucked away spots too, and this is not an area where there are a lot of um, people who are living in public spaces. you can see this little creek will go over to the lake shortly but this is kind of like the wetlands for the lake that's kind of like over there
So I'll show you guys where that is. And this also brings up uh, the topic of ritual dress. So sky clad I know is a popular choice. Obviously in public spaces you'd want to be really careful about that. But also be mindful of your locale. So like this would be a good area in some ways uh, because it's kind of off the trail but there's a lot of standing water here um, and the trails are very muddy as you can see and I'm going to have to ford the creek right here um, so you just want to be aware of your surroundings going into the space and planning your ritual so that uh, you don't end up somewhere in cumbersome robes or something and they get all dirty and you fall down and get muddy and and everything ends up poorly because of that. Uh, it's okay to wear like sneakers during a ritual, you know? It's okay to wear clothes that you can get dirty especially if you're going to be going somewhere out in the out of doors. There's a snarl of really good thorn bushes right here. So if you have any spell work where you want to do protective type ritual, it would be good to know where to get some thorns. So here's one angle of the lake. Um, there are a lot of good access points. Uh, bodies of water are excellent for getting rid of spell residue within reason. Uh, obviously you don't want to be polluting, although somebody did dump a bucket out there. Um, and this is a pretty well-maintained park, so you wouldn't want to be leaving anything around that was obvious or obtrusive or potentially could frighten people. Um, I mean, I just don't work that way. I'm sure a lot of people, part of it is the factor of intimidation, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like a heron out there in the lake. So there's a lot of really awesome wildlife out here too, especially for being such a highly trafficked park. I think these with the brown leaves on them, I think those are dogwood. Um, but it's been a while since I've looked at the species that live around here. They could also be like an elm, maybe? I'll have to get out my Georgia, yeah, Georgia um, tree guidebook. And now the heron is over here in my shot. I was thinking also it's possible they're hickory. There's like a hickory nut here and here. Um, there's lots of oak leaves on the ground, so I know there's oak trees around here of different kinds. It looks like there's at least three different kinds of oak. So from here you can see the proximity to the play structure over here. Um, there are a couple, there's like one behind that copse of trees and there's another one over here that's more like out in the open. Um, so you would want to be mindful of anything that you didn't want children running upon as well if you're working in a public space such as this one. Um, there are also like like up in kind of Dunwoody Doraville area there's like a uh, abandoned um, 
mental institution that a lot of people frequent, but that's not as frequented by children. And then of course, the old prison farm, which is where they're trying to put Cop City. Um, people do talk about that as a loss of green space. I, you know, there's a lot of green space here. I have my own feelings about that and I trust you to form your own opinions. There's a really pretty holly bush right here. There's another bush up there. I think that's privet. Privet is invasive here, but um, a lot of the parks are really overrun with it. Um, and it's a lot of fun to wander through, but uh, is non-native and people are encouraged to tear it up. But if you have need for holly of different types in your ritual. So here is an interesting water feature that you may choose to incorporate in a ritual. For example, if you wanted to simulate some kind of consumption, you could send something through this tube. And then of course you'd have the added benefit of the water elemental energy. Uh, there are a few different ways you could do that, or a few different types of things you could accomplish with that energy. The outflow is over here. So anything that you want to move very, very quickly That would be the kind of energy you want to harness for that. Just some more of the, um, oh, that's my sunglasses, sorry. Uh, more of the different types of trees you have in the park. You've got lots of pine and sweet gum. There's a lot of pine here in this part of the state where I live. Uh, it is above the fall line which is where the ocean used to be. Um, and pine is actually a transitional plant. So when you're converting from wetlands to uh, deciduous forest, oftentimes pines will be an intermediary in that process. And you'll get um, an area of pine forest on the edge of the wetlands, but you have to clear out all of the privet first. So I'm aware that that turned into a bit of an ecology session, but these are all things that you can utilize when you're working outdoors. Um, and in fact, a lot of my work had previously been done outdoors. It's nice to have a dedicated altar space in the home uh, and obviously a lot of your energy accumulation will occur there but as far as like opening portals you don't necessarily want that inside your house um, and outdoors the energy is going to be much more uh, mutable and transient and that can be beneficial for certain types of spell work. So let me know if you guys have questions down in the comments below. Um, if you have any uh, specific questions that you'd like answered, I'm thinking about doing a video specific to like 
planetary and elemental energies in relation to uh, ritual and how best to utilize those. Um, and, uh, oh, there was one more thing. I was thinking about going back to doing kind of like a daily or weekly astrology report. Um, those just didn't particularly perform well, but I mean, compared to what, right? What's ever going to do as well as the glove videos? Probably nothing, so... Uh, <laughs> but um, it's good to see you guys, and I look forward to visiting again with you soon. Um, and never fear. Male threshold.